Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I want to talk about if SpaceX is going to kill Rocket Lab. And a ton, a ton, a ton of people are not investing into Rocket Lab because of the 500 pound South African gorilla in the room. And I actually wanted to do a video showing you guys the facts uh, to see if SpaceX is really a threat to Rocket Lab or they are in adjacent markets or there is space for more companies to exist in this space. So it's going to be a very interesting video. This is definitely um, a topic that really turns a lot of people off. So they have this like goggle vision and they're like, okay, because of SpaceX, I can't even look at Rocket Lab. And honestly, this makes the stocks, this, this makes this stock very sexy for me because it means that only the people who do research are able to find this and you will front run everybody else who will come late to the party. Uh, so I want to show you a clip of a video that just came out and I saw this video on Twitter. I'm not showing this video because there's something special with this video. It's a good video. Uh, but the thing that they say is exactly what probably 90% of the investors think uh, when they look at Rocket Lab. And then I want to address it. So it's very, very, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. So let's begin. I'm going to make myself disappear and then I will reappear. So here we go, guys. Rocket Lab went from an avoid to a like over the years and we think no longer has any showstoppers. Uh, we might find reasons to love this stock one day, uh, which means we would uh, consider holding it. And if we do, paying subscribers, subscribers will be the first to know. Now, the one thing we haven't mentioned here is the 500-pound gorilla in the room, and that's Mr. Musk here with his success rate in launches being over 99%. Uh, his SpaceX enterprise has a $150 billion valuation, 85 Falcon launches in 2023. We can compare that to Rocket Lab's 90% success rate, $2 billion valuation, and eight launches in 2023. So one... So... It's so funny because when you look at these numbers on the surface, it's downright scary. Like, how can you ever compete with this one? But what you have to understand, I cannot find how to appear on the screen again. I, here we go. Okay, something happened. So these numbers look very, very scary when you look at them on face value. So two things to take into consideration right off the bat. So the fact that SpaceX is $150 billion, it means that space companies can reach such a high valuation, uh, number one. So that means that if Rocket Lab is going to grow, they have a huge way to go, right? And if we, I'm not saying that SpaceX is a bad company, but it's not a company that we can invest in, right? And even if we could invest into it, is the $150 billion a good valuation to invest at? Or you basically the VCs, who were invested before, they have taken all the gains and the public market basically gets a behemoth that has very little growth left, okay? Because based on all the numbers that I see at $150 billion, they are still losing money. And the reason why they are getting a humongous valuation is because of Starlink. It's not actually because of their uh, rocket business. And yeah, that that's, there is to say about that one. So this fact, kind of makes me bullish on Rocket Lab because you see how small their valuation is and how much uh, they they can go higher if they if things go in the right direction, right? Number one. Number two, the success rate. So you can look at this and say, oh my God, 99% success rate versus a 90% success rate. But what you have to consider is that rockets, they evolve over time. So the younger the rocket, probably the more failure that you're going to have. So the Electron rocket is, I don't want to say something stupid, but it's much younger than the Falcon 9 rocket, right? And you have to compare them to when the Falcon 9 was the same years old as uh, the Electron, what was their success rate at that time, because that would be a fair comparison. For example, Rocket, Rocket Lab just had a, a bad launch and it was basically, to my understanding, a completely freak accident. And 
it was so unlucky how it happened that even if you would have told the engineers that this can happen, they would say that the probability is so low that they're anyways just going to run to lock it. But nevertheless, they, you know, they, it happened, it sucks, and then they fixed it. So now we have a much more reliable vehicle, right? Uh, so the point is Dave G invest. I really like that guy. I'm, I'm a member of his channel and, uh, he did a very good comparison video and he actually looked at it year by year, the reliability of the Falcon nine versus the rocket lab electron. And they are basically the same. Okay. It's just the Falcon nine is much older and it's much more mature. And they also did have accidents and then they made the rocket better. And that's why you have the 99%. Uh, success rate. Okay. Then the next thing, the launches, it's the same thing. The Falcon 9 didn't start out launching 85 launches in a year. Okay. They started out launching one and then the next year they went three and then the next year they went seven, exactly as the Electron is doing. So simply the two companies are not at the same maturity. So it's not fair to look at the numbers like this. Okay. So then I want to address some other very interesting uh, points and I want to say something. So why does it keep showing a bookkeeping that I'm working on? Sorry, guys. Um, so you should not invest into Rocket Lab or any space stocks because I'm making a video about it. This is, by the way, not in any way, shape or form investment advice. I don't want you to invest into Rocket Lab because you saw this video and then you became bullish. But what I want you to do is take away that, okay, there might be something here. And then you yourself should take a look at, at the company. And I get a lot of questions of people like, how can they see the same thing that I see with Rocket Lab? And what I have to say to that is read this book, Ashley Vance, When the Heavens Went on Sale. This guy is a fantastic writer. He follows uh, basically the birth of the new space industry. He explains why there is suddenly privatized space, uh, what made that possible. And then he follows Planet Labs, Astra, uh, Firefly and um, Rocket Lab. And you basically learn the history of Rocket Lab, uh, why they have a market niche, how they're different from SpaceX. And it's hard to be not bullish on Rocket Lab after you read that book. The guy Peter Beck has already accomplished the impossible to come to the point where they are. Like basically he climbed the Mount Everest blindsided without food and water and he somehow made it to the other side. And the fact that they have to develop, you know, one more rocket, it's nothing. Like the guy has already done the impossible. I have 100% uh, trust in him. So if you're interested in the company, really, really you should take the time to read this book or listen to this book. So now back to SpaceX killing Rocket Lab. So I want to show you some things that people, again, they because they don't understand the space industry, they don't focus on, on the right numbers. So let's say the Falcon 9, we know that Rocket Lab is making a, a competitor rocket, which is called the Neutron, right? And a lot of people say, yeah, but SpaceX is so cheap on the per uh, the price per kilogram to low earth orbit okay and this is where you're wrong because yes they are the cheapest per kilogram to low earth orbit you can see that their launch is 67 million dollars a launch and they can launch 25 tons into low earth orbit whereas neutron is going to be able to launch 13 tons to low earth orbit and it's going to cost about 50 million dollars so right off the bat, you can see that uh, SpaceX can launch a lot more and it's cheaper per kilogram. But what if your satellite is 13 tons? Okay, then you have the choice of taking the cheap Falcon 9 for $67 million or the expensive Neutron rocket for $50 million. You're going to take the Neutron any day of the week. Okay, and there's a lot of payloads uh, that fit into the neutron where the Falcon nine is too big. Okay. So this is why these two will compete in adjacent markets. And we already know that, you know, certain customers are refusing to launch with must Musk, no matter what. So that is, for example, Jeff Bezos. So they have to launch super many satellites, uh, for the, uh, the Kuiper, 
Internet Constellation, which is a competitor to Starlink. And it looks like Blue Origin's rockets are not going to be on time. Uh, they hire two other companies and their rockets are also delayed. So if Neutron gets done in time, they will be in this very, you know, at the right time, in the right place to launch a crap ton of satellites for Amazon. And they are not going to launch with SpaceX. I don't need to explain to you why. So these two are going to operate in adjacent markets. So there will be satellites that is good for the Falcon 9, but not for the Neutron. And there will be a lot that is going to be good for the Neutron and not for the Falcon 9. But then you're going to say, yeah, but the Falcon 9 is soon going to be, um, you know, decommissioned and uh, SpaceX is going to come out with the Starship and that's going to beat everything. And, you know, the price is going to be 2 million as Musk said. So what Musk said is that the price of the fuel is going to be $2 million, but you need a lot more than just refueling the rocket. You need personnel. You need to amortize the cost of the rocket. Let's say that the rocket is good for 20 launches and the rocket costs you 100 million, right? Then just the amortization of the rocket is 5 million per launch. We don't know what that number is. Then you have personnel. You have the security personnel, you have the pad personnel, you have the, you know, you know, the drone ship that you need to operate. A ton of extra costs, okay? So even though Musk says that the gas is going to cost 2 million, uh, a lot of people associate that, that they're going to sell the launch for 2 million. Ain't no way that they're going to sell the launch for 2 million. Okay. I can tell you that. And you have to remember that SpaceX is a mission driven company. And the reason why they are developing the Starship is not because there was market demand for the Starship. It's because that's the only ship and that's the only way that we can get to Mars. Okay. This is very important to keep in mind that they have a huge 150 tons they can do to low earth orbit. And there wasn't anyone asking for being able to launch 150 tons to low earth orbit, but this is the only way that you can have meaningful cargo go to Mars. And this is why they developed this rocket. And again, it happens to be because the rocket is fully re reusable. It's going to be cheap for also much smaller uh, payloads. And I think what's going to happen is there's going to be new science new things that are going to use the fact that you can take so much space to low Earth uh, orbit. And if you refuel the rocket, you know, you can take 150 tons, I think, even to the moon and to, to Mars. And it's going to be very, very exciting. OK, but the point is that that demand doesn't even exist today. So how much will a Starship uh, launch cost? OK, uh, and of course, I prepared this, but it disappeared. Um, so here, here it is. This is about the sixth of the potential maximum of 150 metric tons of payload of Starship. So he's talking about that the Falcon uh, 9 uh, and the Starship. So the Starship can take six times as much uh, mass to orbit. And Musk estimates that it would cost as little as 10 million per launch within a few years. Uh, currently, each launch costs about 100 million, and that is still 40% less per kilogram than the Falcon 9. So the point here is that they need to iterate and iterate and iterate and launch and launch and launch to get the cost down. If you were a customer, and even if you're SpaceX, it wouldn't make sense to me that customers are already paying you $67 million to ride on the Falcon 9, and now you're offering them a different ship that is you know, cheaper for you, why would you lower your price? It doesn't make sense to lower your price, especially because uh, on top of the article, you can say that the, the development of the Starship was between five to $10 billion. So that money has to be amortized on the launches. And that's a lot of launches to earn back that money. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that in the beginning years, they're going to keep the prices and for bigger payloads, it's probably going to be a hundred million per launch. So it doesn't at all kill neutron where it kills the neutron is when you have something very, very heavy to launch the orbit. But if you don't have that, the neutron is going to be a super viable option. And here's my last argument of why SpaceX is not as scary as you think. This is the investor presentation of Rocket Lab from Q3. And this is how their revenues are divided from 
Q2 to Q3. And you can see this black one is space services and this red one is rocket launch. And you can see that space services is manufacturing uh, this stuff that is here is star trackers, software, space cuff structures, solar cells, radios, separation items in space proportion, and all this lovely stuff. So Rocket Lab is not even really a rocket company. It's a misnomer. And this segment, it's very hard to find data on it, how much it's going to grow. But I believe that this is con continue. It, it's going to continue to be a much bigger section in Rocket Lab than the actual launches. And this is much more stable. These things don't blow up, except if they're on a rocket. And SpaceX is not even in this. And the end goal of uh, Rocket Lab is to develop, use their own rockets to shoot up their own satellites and build out some space infrastructure. Uh, just, it's not going to be like Starlink, but Starlink gave a hundred billion valuation to SpaceX. So imagine that they come up with something different and it, get, it gets them a 10 billion or 15 billion extra valuation. That is a 7X in the stock on the day that they announced it. And it's so crazy, I don't even have it in my model. Like I think that they're a buy just based on their rocket launch and their space systems, okay? So this is my answer, you know, you, you do with this data whatever you want. I don't think that SpaceX is I think it's a fantastic company, but I don't think it's going to kill Rocket Lab. And I think that they are in adjacent markets. They're not competing with each other. And there's more than enough space uh, in the universe for these two companies to exist. So thank you so much for watching. If you got value out of this content uh, and you want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon. And currently, if you join, it's just basically a donation. You're buying me a coffee. But in the future, what I'm trying to... Uh, do with Patreon is I will post all my price targets, all my analysis, uh, you know, subscriber only content, and it's going to be really good. I'm a very long term investor and I want to focus on 10 stocks that I follow and I'm a super nerd on. I'm not going to be this guy who covers all the stocks on the stock market. It's just going to be focused on a very few stocks that I will know uh, a lot about. And you will be able to follow at what prices I would buy those stocks and what those stocks are and the thesis and my valuation. And then you can do your own due diligence and make your own decisions. So it would be awesome. The link is in the description box below. Please make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.